Hi there. My name's JD and I'm from an organisation called Live and Learn Environmental Education. Uh, our mission is to reduce poverty and increase the overall understanding about sustainable issues and we do that. The, uh, live and Learn can uh, contribute uh, our, our activity to reduce uh, poverty and to increase uh, sustainable development through uh, mental education and sustainable development. The Tonga Sap in Cambodia is the largest lake in Southeast Asia. In 1997, it was recognized by UNESCO as a biosphere reserve. 340,000 people live in the immediate vicinity of the lake and are supported by its resources. The Tonglesap's rich fisheries provide up to 80% of the total protein intake of Cambodians and the lake's floodplain produces 12% of Cambodia's rice. A third of the population on and around the lake lives below the poverty line. There is virtually no waste management in rural areas of Cambodia. In the floating villages of the Tom Sap, all rubbish is disposed of into the lake. Humans and livestock defecate directly into the water and oil spills from boats are a constant problem. While surveys indicate that locals are concerned about the environmental and health impacts of dumping waste in the lake, they see no alternative solution. It follows that water quality and sanitation present problems to the locals of the Tonga Sap. The people use water taken directly from the lake for drinking, bathing, washing and irrigation. Waterborne diseases such as typhoid fever, hepatitis and diarrhea are prevalent. Bacterial levels around the floating houses are up to 10 times higher than in other areas of the lake. In certain areas around the Tonga Sap, Less than 10% of people have access to adequate sanitation. Few have access to latrines. A third issue that needs to be addressed in Tonle Sap is housing and infrastructure. Communities have adopted several solutions to living on and around the water. Some people live in small, portable houses that can be moved in order to remain close to the shore as the lake expands and contracts. They are typically raised on foot high stilts. Other buildings are permanent and raised on stilts up to 5 meters from the ground. They are surrounded by water during the wet season, but land-based during the dry season. Floating houses remain on the water and move with the height of the lake. Bamboo, steel drums, and plastic burrows are used for buoyancy. The construction quality of all building types differ widely between the people of varying means and many are vulnerable to frequent storms. Climate change may lead to an increase in violent storms and a rise in water levels as glaciers in the Himalayas melt. Sustainable use of biodiversity is important for the people of the Tonle Sap. The productive fisheries and agricultural land need to be well managed in order to preserve the area's natural value. Many local species are endangered and a few, such as the Irrawaddy dolphin, have been lost. Produce from fisheries has decreased from 400,000 tonnes in earlier years to just 230,000 tonnes. Forests around the lake have also been depleted and the area covered by forests has decreased by over 75%. Transport is an issue all over Cambodia as roads are generally in poor condition. In the Tonlesap area, many roads are cut off during the rainy season, isolating some communities. Stilted buildings are accessible by road during the dry season and boat during the wet season. Portable houses have road access all year round, while floating houses have perennial boat access. On average, Tonglesap locals are 10 kilometers away from the nearest permanent market and 2.4 kilometers from the nearest primary school. Locals could benefit from more efficient boat design, alternative water transport, or combination land water transport. Electricity is expensive and hard to come by in Cambodia. The power grid reaches only 9% of people in rural areas. It is charged almost exclusively by diesel-powered stations. 
Many people use small diesel generators to recharge 12 volt batteries. Overall, 30% of Cambodians have access to some form of electricity. More than 80% of the country's energy supply comes from wood or charcoal, and some comes from petroleum products. Information technology is far less advanced in Cambodia than in Australia. Only 0.3% of Cambodians use the internet. However, 88% of the country is covered by a mobile network, and 43% of households have a television, most of which are powered by a 12-volt car battery. Providing rural Cambodians with access to communication technologies is a challenge, especially in the floating villages of the Tonla Sap. With the EWB challenge, there's so many other issues to do with living on the water. You know, how do you store rainwater? How do you make sure the quality of the water is good? How do you have energy in a floating situation? What about communication? How do you simplify communication? How do you make sure the school doesn't sink? There, there are all lots of challenges and lots of thoughts for lots of students to think about and we look forward to getting all your feedback. Yeah.